I've been using some food colouring here and I've made a little bit of a mess on the plate. What should I wipe it up with? Piece of writing paper or paper towel? The writing paper doesn't do much good at all. It just sits in the puddle. On the other hand, the paper towel very rapidly starts to soak up the fluid. Look at that. You can see the red food colouring climbing up through the little holes or pores or spaces in the paper towel. Those holes are interconnected. Sometimes we call tiny little tubes or interconnected holes capillaries. In fact, the smallest tubes of blood in our bodies are called capillaries. And if you have a look at the celery stem here, you'll notice that I've dipped one half after splitting the stem in red food colouring, the other half in blue. And what's happened? Well, the left-hand side of the celery has started to go a reddish colour. The right-hand side, a bluish colour, all the way up to the leaves, because there are tiny little tubes, capillary tubes, in the celery stem. Well, here's a problem for you. I've made a little bridge out of blotting paper and I'm going to dip that into two dishes. The left hand one contains red food colouring, the right hand dish contains blue food colouring. Already you can see those colours starting to climb up the paper. Look at that, the blue is starting to appear on the right hand side. It's rapidly rising and the red is rapidly rising on the left hand side. Now we're going to come back and have a look at that bridge a little later in the program. What do you think will happen when the two colours meet? Do you think the red and blue will just stop like that? Or do you think they'll stop back a little bit, leaving white in between? Or will they overlap, forming purple? Make up your mind and we'll see if you're correct. the celery at the beginning of the program. Have a look at it now. The leaves on the left are decidedly red, veins of red. Leaves on the right, you can see blue veins in them because the red food colouring on the left and blue food colouring on the right have travelled up tiny little tubes, capillary tubes, all the way to the leaves. And what about the other problem? The problem of the bridge made of paper between red and blue. What did you say? Did you say that red and blue would meet and stop? Overlap and form purple or leave a gap between them, white paper. Well, if the colours had been blue and yellow, they would have actually met and overlapped slightly, forming a band of green. But with red and blue, look what happened. They actually stopped and left a white gap in the centre. Why is that? Well, it's because the red is not as soluble in water as is the blue. It lags behind the water as it rises up the paper. And that very fact means that scientists can separate out colours because they sometimes dissolve at different rates. It's called chromatography. Now that's a big word, but it's something very easy to do at home. Here's what you need. You need some felt pens, which have coloured inks in them. And you need some paper. Now, I find that the best kind of paper to use is blotting paper, but you can also use paper toweling, or you can use uh, coffee filter paper, or just about any other kind you like. Make some dots across the top or the bottom of a strip of paper. If you make them at the top, then you turn it around so that they become the bottom. Now, I've actually used five colours. You can use your whole set of coloured pens if you like. Look at that. Across the bottom, we have black, green, purple, orange and brown. And I put the initials of those colours at the top so that we can remember which one went where. Now I'm going to place that in a glass that contains about a centimetre of water. Now I've carefully positioned the dots so that they will sit above the surface of the water. Now as soon as the paper sits in there, water starts to rise up the blotting paper. Look at that. And the more porous the paper, the more rapidly the water will rise. It's now going into the dots and something interesting begins to happen. The inks start to dissolve. Now you might say, so what? Well, look what's happening. The one on the left was originally black, wasn't it? But what can you see right at the bottom? Purple. What can you see at the top? A bluey colour. It start, it's starting to separate out into different coloured inks. You see that black was not made up of pure black, but of different colours. The next one was green. It's separating out into yellow at the bottom and a bluey green at the top. 
Well, after about five minutes, this is what you'll get. Here's one that was set up exactly the same way. Now look at it. The black is separated out into purple, pink, browny yellow colour, and then a very dark blue. And many of the other colours have also separated. Try it on all of your pens and see how you can separate them with chromatography. And here's another way you can do it. You don't have to use a strip of paper. You can actually use a circle of paper cut from a coffee filter. Once you've cut that circle, all you need to do is to slice a little strip with the scissors up here and then fold that down. And then make a dot of the colour you want to separate. And in this case, I'll use the same black pen again. And you make the dot just near the fold, about there. And then you place the whole thing over a dish of water. Have a look at this. There's the dish and you make sure that that bit dips down so that water can climb up onto the filter paper from that little strip that's going down into the water. Now, nothing happens until the water reaches the black and you can see it's reaching it now. Then when it gets to the centre of the filter paper, it starts to spread out in all directions. Here's one that had been going about a minute when I stopped it. Have a look at that. You can see that already it started to divide the black up into its different colours. Here's one that's been going three minutes, and here's one that went for five minutes before I stopped it. And it looks like a beautiful flower, doesn't it? OK, one more thing for you to do at home. You've all seen coloured chalk, but have you seen rainbow chalk? Look at that piece there. It has purple and it has a greyish colour and green and yellow all together. You know how I made it? Simply with a piece of white chalk and using that very same black pen, I made a line around the base of the chalk. There's one there where I've made a nice even line all the way around. What do you do with that? I'm sure you've guessed it already. You simply stand it in a glass of water and hold it upright and hold it there for about three, four, five minutes until the water climbs to the top of the chalk. And when it does so, once again, you've separated your colours by chromatography and you've produced rainbow-coloured chalk. What can you do with that? I suppose you could give it to the teacher.